So what are some perks of using CapCut's inbuilt thumbnail maker? Well, the first one is you can make premium thumbnails for absolutely free, which is more than most thumbnail makers. The second is you have access to hundreds of different templates, which you can literally click and it applies that template directly to your photo or thumbnail, which is great. The third is, and this is important to us editors, is you don't have to export a screenshot or something from your video and import that into another software, which can be frustrating at times when you spend so much time inside of the app. And lastly, using CapCut to create your thumbnail just integrates directly into your workflow. So again, you don't have to use separate software, make a screenshot, it just integrates right in there, which is fantastic. No additional exports, just from CapCut. Guys, I wanted to say thank you so, so much to all those who continually support the channel and buy my premium editing products. I hope they are serving you well. If you're keen to support the channel, all you have to do is leave a comment or subscribe. That goes a long way. And if you're interested in buying some digital products to up your editing game, check out the first link in the description and that'll take you to my site when you can support me some more. Thank you so much. Now let's get into it. With millions of thumbnails, what actually makes a good thumbnail? That's kind of like in my book, asking what makes a good pizza. We all have our personal preference. We're all gonna click something different dependent on the day and the time. Now there are some principles that I like to stick to, but again, it doesn't apply for every video. Some of the videos of mine that have performed really well go against this rule, right? But you'll hear from a Mr. Beast that you generally wanna have a couple key elements. You wanna have a face reaction, something that makes your thumbnail personable. So a lot of my thumbnails have me or some sort of character in it pulling a face reaction, right? The next thing you want is a couple words or one or two words of text that helps contextualize what your video is about. Now, generally you don't want it to be the same as the title because somebody's already reading the title. So you wanna have text in your thumbnail that's a little bit different and causes some sort of interest or intrigue to click on. And lastly, you wanna make your thumbnail noticeable. You want it to pop, you want it to stand out from the hundreds and thousands and millions of thumbnails on YouTube. So we're gonna be talking about how to do all of those things directly inside of CapCut. But remember, this isn't a hard locked, you have to do this rule because again, sometimes videos that don't oblige by these rules actually perform better. And that's why I would recommend using YouTube's test and compare feature. What this YouTube test and compare feature does is it allows you to post three different thumbnails and it essentially watches which thumbnail pulls in the most views and retains people the longest. And it's so easy to make those three different thumbnails inside of CapCut, just tweaking a couple different things. All right, so the first step to making a great thumbnail. If you're doing sit down talk videos like this, before you start recording, and I didn't even do it for this video, that is, I'm not following my own rule. But step number one is to pull some sort of facial reaction. Before any video, and again, not in this case, I pull a couple of different facial reactions that I think will fit alongside here. So as we scrub through, you can see, I've just got about five different facial reactions. You know, it's those kinds of things that different emotions, different reactions, and you'll be able to pick the best one for yourself. And again, like Mr. B says, it is so important to have a recognizable face with some sort of emotion in your videos. So that's gonna get that covered for the first part. Once you've recorded your video and you're done, and this is why this is so seamless, you're gonna bring your video and import it into CapCut. Now, if you do one recording, this take is obviously gonna be a lot longer, but we're just gonna trim for now so I can show you for reference sake how to use this. Once you have your video inside of CapCut, it is now time to make your pro level thumbnail. Alternatively, if you are taking photos, you can also import a photo, but I think most of you are gonna be doing videos, so let's just work with the video for now. Now on the bottom left here, there's something called cover. Go ahead and click that. What you're gonna be able to do is see your entire timeline represented on here. What we can then do is drag this little playhead and pick one of the reactions that we did. So there's a kind of shock face, there I'm pointing, and you can see we can also use our little arrow keys on our keyboard to find the exact frame, I really like that, that we wanna use. Once you've found that frame, go ahead and click edit. Now, many of you probably haven't seen this feature, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it wider for our reference sake. This is CapCut's thumbnail maker. Check at this, if we're in the top left here, we have video cover and there are tons of different templates according to the niche that you're posting. So I know a lot of you may be doing gaming videos and if we click gaming, you can see, I'm just gonna keep scrolling down here. There are just 
tons of gaming thumbnails that we can use. We'll get back to that. But the first and the very, very first thing that I would recommend you do before anything else, and this is gonna save you a lot of time in trying to reorganize things, is go to the top here where it says view, click the down arrow and say show layer panel. This is gonna bring up your layers, much like your editing software. It's gonna allow you to reposition certain elements and we'll get to how that can be really, really cool in a second. Once you have your layers enabled, let's go back and find a really cool template that we think can work for us. Go ahead and click on the template and that's gonna apply all the elements of that template directly to our photo while still keeping us as the center and the background of that image. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? If we wanted to use the actual photo that they have here, we're gonna click cancel, click exit, say cancel, create cover and say new, and that's gonna give us a white background. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is click that photo and that's gonna import those elements from that photo. But I kind of like, again, we wanna use our face. I like using our face, so let's go back to where we were. Now, once you have your elements and your template ready to go, you can completely customize every single element. And what's cool is when we click an element, it shows us which layer that element is on, and it brings us these different panels that we can change. So if we go to presets, we can obviously change the type that is, we can change the font of our text, the color of our text, the size of our text, and all the things that you would want in any other software. If you click the expand and then the adjust, you can obviously add blurs and certain effects that you see a lot of popular YouTubers using all the time, which is great. Something like a glow also goes a long way. If we change this glow to dark, you can see that adds a really nice glow around our text. I'm not gonna run too much in depth because this video would be super, super long. I just wanna give you an overview of some of the cool features. Another really neat trick is actually separating our subject from our background and then being able to put elements behind our subject to create that kind of 3D effect like you're seeing on screen right now. It's so easy to do. All you need to do is go to upload and you'll find the photo that you clicked and uploaded from your timeline. All you then need to do is click remove background and say auto removal and that'll automatically remove the background from your subject. Now, if we see in the bottom left here, it hasn't done a perfect job at removing that background. So we can go to customize, click erase, make the size of my brush a little bit bigger. And now I can go ahead and erase those elements that I don't wanna see in our photo. Once you're happy with that, click save in the top right and that'll take us back to the thumbnail maker. Now what you can see is our subject is in front of all of our elements. Remember what I said about enabling your layer? This is why. It's because we probably don't want our thumbnail to be all the way in front of some of these elements, just some of them. So now we can reorder which ones work the way they do. I can move this behind my head. How cool is that? It looks like it's behind our subject. Now this one's in front because it's above the layer. If we drag it behind the layer, it'll go behind. And let's go ahead and select all these text layers by holding shift. And we can drag them above. And now we have those emojis behind us, but our text is in front of us. From here, another cool thing that you can do, because you have your subject in front of your background, go ahead and click your subject, go to effects, and we can go ahead and apply a blur to our background to separate us even further. You can also go and adjust those values. If I turn it up to 100, you can now see that our background is super blurred and we're very much in focus. Lastly, remember what I said about making your thumbnail pop? If we go to our background, go to adjust, we have a whole set of adjustment tabs where you can change things like warmth, saturation, exposure to make it pop and a bit brighter. Let's make that brightness up, turn the contrast up. Obviously, I wouldn't generally be using these values but we can obviously crank up the values to make things pop. In your remove background tab, in addition to clicking customize, you can also say edit edge. Once you have your subject as an independent object, you can add things like a shadow to your subject. In addition, you can add things like a stroke, which is gonna outline your subject, or you can add a glow, which a lot of YouTubers use in order to create a cool glow effect and really, really, really make your subject stand out from the background. Now, lastly, CapCut isn't gonna have every single thing that you need in order to make pro-level thumbnails. That's why I recommend using something like Vect Easy or FreePick in order to download some free assets, make sure that they're free license, but you can download those assets and integrate them into your project. All you have to do is go to Upload, then click this cloud icon and it's gonna open up the panel on your computer where you can select that element, that PNG file, and upload it directly into the thumbnail maker and integrate it into your project. So that's what I would recommend for some things and some stickers and objects that you may wanna add that you don't necessarily have. We didn't even touch on it yet because we've been doing the template. If you wanna add your own text, go ahead and click text and there are just tons of other text templates that you can use. Alternatively, at the top there's add title 
And again, you have access to make your own text, open up the text basic panel, and you can change all the elements that we already spoke about when we added that template. There's some presets, some opacity, you can obviously arrange it to exactly the way you want. If you ever want to delete a layer, just highlight it and click backspace, and that's going to remove the layer from your project. Once you're happy with your thumbnail, all you need to do is click save. That's going to load it in as a cover in our timeline. And once you're on your timeline, make sure that you see your cover in the bottom left there. Do you edit to your video, select your in and out points, click export. Now, what I would do is I would highly recommend disabling add video cover at the beginning. We don't want our image to be at the very beginning couple frames of our video. Then we can just title this thumbnail select our output destination, open, export your video, and let me show you what happens once our video is done exporting. So once your video is done exporting, go open folder. And what that's gonna give us is the export folder where we had our export. And you can see our thumbnail cover is right there. That's exactly how you do it. It's exported our video and it's exported our thumbnail at the same time. And you can obviously upload that JPEG directly to YouTube to use as a thumbnail. And if you ever wanna make edits to your thumbnail, you realize that you wanna make some more or you're just not happy with something, go cancel. You can just go ahead and click, click to edit cover and that's gonna open up our thumbnail design page where we can make all the edits that we need. All right, guys, that's all from today. I really hope it was informative and I taught you something new. I hope to see you in another video. Thank you for joining me. Cheers.